Just one more short section out of the encyclia, uh, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy on uh, Descartes and the pineal gland. Um, in this last section, uh, okay, so this kind of this kind of brings together what the the big problem is here. Uh, section 2.4, body and soul. One would like to know a little more about the nature of the soul and its relationship with the body, but Descartes never proposed a final theory about these issues. From the passages, such as the ones we have just quoted, one might infer that he was an interactionist who thought that there are causal interactions between events in the body and events in the soul, but this is by no means the only interpretation that has been put forward. Uh, in the secondary literature, one finds at least the following interpretations. One, Descartes was a scholastic Aristotelian hylomorphist who thought that the soul is not a substance, but the first actuality or substantial form of the living body. Um, two, he was a Platonist who became more and more extreme. The first stage in Descartes' writing presents a moderate Platonism, and he's quoting here a source. The second, a scholastic Platonism. The third, an extreme Platonism, which following Martian, uh, we may also call Angelism. Uh, Cartesian dualism breaks up into two complete substance joined to, to one another. No one knows how. On one, uh, on the one hand, the body, which is only geometric extension. On the other, the soul, which is only thought. An angel inhabiting a machine and directing it by means of the pineal gland. Uh, not that there is anything very moderate about his original position. It is only the surprising final position that can justify assigning it that title. Okay. He, three, he articulated or came to close to articulating a trialistic distinction between three primitive categories or notions, extension, that's the body, thought, the mind, and the union of body and mind. Four, he was a dualistic interactionist who thought that the rational soul and the body have a causal influence on each other. This is the interpretation one finds in most undergraduate textbooks. Five, he was a dualist who denied that causal interactions between the body and the mind are possible and therefore defended a parallelism in which changes of definite kinds occur, uh, occurrent in the nerves and brain synchronize with certain mental states correlated with them. Six, he was at least on, to a certain extent, a non-parallelist because he believed that pure actions of the soul such as doubting, understanding, affirming, denying, and willing can occur without any corresponding or correlated physiological events taking place. The quote, the brain cannot in any way be employed in pure understanding but only in imagining or perceiving by the senses. Seven, he was a dualistic occasionalist just like his early follower, uh, followers Cordemoy and Laforge, and thought that mental and physical events are nothing but occasions for God to act and to bring about an event in the other domain. And we saw this uh, out of uh, Arabic philosophy. Uh, and I, I wanted to emphasize it there uh, because, okay, this is one interpretation of uh, Descartes, and then there'll be something similar that, uh, that shows up in uh, in Leibniz, uh, who I want to talk about later. Eight, he was an uh, epiphenomenalist as far as the passions are concerned. He viewed them as causally ineffectual byproducts of the brain activity. Nine, he was a supervenientist in the sense that he thought that the will is su supervenient to, that is determined by the body, okay? Uh, the neurophysiology of the treatise of man seems fully consistent 
with a materialist dual aspect identity theory of mind and body. Okay, so dual aspect. Uh, I think this kind of gets at what I was talking about, that Aristotelian connection. Uh, he was a skeptical idealist, 11 and then 12. He was a convert materialist who hid his true opinion about uh, out of fear of the theologians. Okay, so he wasn't being entirely honest. Okay, so it's very difficult to interpret uh, what Descartes is talking about, but he creates this problem. Okay, uh, let me cut this video off here, and then I'll I'll try to uh, draw out what I want you to uh, take away from this.